What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, J-Man, back checking in with the people. And today, I want to talk about PlayStation 4 and this 5.0 update that I'm hoping is going to be a big one. Uh, if you didn't know, earlier today, a tweet went out that the registrations for the 5.0 beta, they're out. If you have not got a chance to sign up, I will leave a link in the description. Go ahead and fill out the information. If you have a PSN account, you probably log in with that. They might have a couple questions on there and then you're good to go as far as being signed up. I'm not sure if everybody gets picked, but I've been in about three or four of the betas and I think they've only had about four or five. So the chances of you getting picked are probably very high. As long as you register, I'm sure probably the earlier, the better. Um, so I'll leave that link down in the description. But today, I wanted to do a wish list for this update. Um, I know it's only going to be the beta, so it might not have everything. But I kind of just want to tackle some things that I really want to see them put in this update that we haven't gotten yet on PlayStation 4. Now, some of you, if not all of you, may know Xbox One has been killing it when it comes to features. I mean, they've got everything under the damn sun plus more um, in that department. And PlayStation is definitely lagging behind. So... I'm going to need them to, you know, get the gears rolling and put some more work into, you know, what we got going on on the PlayStation 4. Um, one of the big things, and I'm going to start my list with number one. One of the big things that I thought the Xbox One has is digital refunds. Digital refunds is something that would save everybody so much time. Um, we all know PlayStation customer service is horrible. Um, some people have had good experiences with getting refunds, but I think it, it'll just be easier to go through the system itself. Um, you, of course, you got to put some limitations on it. Maybe uh, you can only play for a certain amount of hours. I believe it's two hours on Steam, and I think Xbox is going to be the same thing. Um, you know, two hours or if you own the game for a certain amount of time without playing it is like the time frame you have before you can refund the game. Um, I think it's huge. Uh, maybe you play a game for an hour or two and it's just not for you and you want to get a refund on it. And now, of course, you got to put some limitations where people are not abusing the system. Maybe you can only do it a few times a week, a few times a month, something like that, where people aren't just trying games here and there, back and forth and, you know, returning them because, you know, I got, that's kind of cheap. You know what I'm saying? You should know what you're getting yourself into before you buy it. We got the internet these days. We got people who are knowledgeable. Reviews all over the damn place. The internet is free. Go to a library look up a video and you can probably see if the game is for you. Um, but besides the point, I think digital refunds will cut out having to call customer service, maybe being on hold for like an hour just to go through more loops and holes just to get, you know, a refund and then maybe even get declined because sometimes PlayStation is just on that bullshit and they don't want to refund you um, a game that you didn't even touch. Uh, so that would be something, you know, they would have in place. Of course, they would have to have... Um, you know, like I said, all the stipulations and things like that, but digital refunds is one of the big ones that Xbox has coming that I need PlayStation to get on board. Another one is gifting games. Now, this one isn't on Xbox One yet, but there were a couple tweets like a week ago where they were talking about how it's on the way. So it's in the works. Um, gifting games is not a huge thing, but... It's cool, you know what I'm saying? If you want to buy somebody a game without having to go to Amazon or go out to the store and buy PSN cards, you know, transfer the codes and then they got to put it on their platform and then download the game. You know, it, it cuts out a lot of steps when you want to gift somebody something. So if it's somebody's birthday, you know, you buy a game, it goes directly to their account. They don't even have to know you're doing it if it works like how Steam has it going on. So gifting the game, um, it'll be easier for... I, I'm assuming it'll put more money in PlayStation's pocket. Maybe uh, you don't have to go through uh, middlemen to buy certain things. You know what I'm saying? You go directly to the PlayStation store, put your information in, buy the game, send it off to that account. So gifted games is another thing that I had on my list. Um, this third one now, it's not going to be for everybody. Now, if you're like me, you have a PlayStation 4 Pro. And if you're also like me, you have a 1080p display. Now, before I even say anything, if you have a 1080p display, do not get a PlayStation 4 Pro. It is not worth spending the extra money to get a PlayStation 4. And this is one of the big reasons why, which is why I hope they address it in the update. It might not be something big they address, but 
something on the side, kind of how like boost mode was, and it caught everybody by surprise. And this is another feature that the Xbox One X is going to have. So you kind of get the theme that I'm going with. Like it's things that Xbox already has that I need PlayStation to get on board with. I'm talking about system-wide downsampling. If you don't know what system-wide downsampling is, that means any game that you play that has, you know, the 4K update, it'll take that game and downsample it so that it takes that 4K quality image and shrinks it down to fit your 1080p display. So that alone is gonna give you a more crisper image um, when you're gaming. Now, some games take advantage of this, but some, a lot of games, I'm not even gonna say some, a lot of games that have pro support do not have down sampling. But if you make it system wide, you won't have to worry about the developers not adding this feature in. Um, I don't know how easy it is to do something like that. I don't know if that's something that they would have had to take care of in advance and now it's too late, but I know the Xbox has it and PlayStation has done some things on the low that we were surprised, like HDR on the OG PS4. Like those are things that people were like, what the hell? Like we didn't even know that was in there. They just had to flip a switch basically and add that on. So system-wide downsampling uh, might not be for everybody. I think for the pro, it'll be a great upgrade and it'll probably get more people to buy it because they a lot of people still have 1080p displays. Um, Moving on to number four. Now this one, I mean, everybody kind of been asking for this for years and we still haven't got it, but I got to add it to my list. PSN name changes. I'm going to keep asking for this until the day it's here. Um, <laughs> PSN name changes should have been something that we already had. You know, the yada, yada, yada. Everybody talks about this. So PSN name changes, please add them so I can change my goddamn name. It's been almost 10 goddamn years. If not... Yeah, around there somewhere. Too damn long is what I'm saying. So add the goddamn name changes. We'll pay you. Nobody gives a damn uh, 10 bucks, whatever it is. Or we make it free uh, for the first time, 10 bucks after. People will be fine with that. Um, PSN name changes. We got down sampling. We have gifting games. And we have digital refunds. Um, another thing I was thinking about just now that crossed my mind that might be included with this update is a revamp kind of with PlayStation Now. Uh, PlayStation Now has kind of been sneaking its way into a lot of things these days. Uh, recently, they announced that PS4 games were on there. When I turned on my PS4 the other day, PlayStation Now was an app by itself on my PlayStation 4 uh, cross media bar. Didn't even ask for it to be there. Didn't download or nothing. It was just there. Um, Sony trying to promote PlayStation Now, but nobody cares about that streaming service because of streaming. They need to add the ability to download games on PlayStation Now. And I'm telling you that service will go from zero to 100 real motherfucking quick. I would even be thinking about subscribing to that because the latency is something that's keeping me away from playing PlayStation Now. Like, I don't really care to play a lot of old games, but there might be one or two that I might be like, ah, oh, maybe I'll go back and play that. Like Red Dead Redemption. Um, that's something that's not on PC, so I would have to play that on consoles. Um... Maybe they can finally add the PS1 and PS2 games to that and broaden that library because if it has all platforms on there, that just makes it more enticing for people to buy. So I'm hoping to see PlayStation now get revamped with things like that. Maybe you got to keep the streaming thing because that's cool. Uh, maybe improve the streaming stuff. Uh, stuff. You know what I'm saying? Maybe make that better so the latency isn't as bad. You know, so maybe they'll adjust that. Probably not. But like I said, it's been sneaking its way onto my, my cross media bar. It was actually in the, if you register for the beta, it's a question in there if you're subscribed to PlayStation Now. So little hints here and there got me thinking that this update might have something to do with PlayStation Now. But that's my list. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if there's anything you felt that I missed that you want to see on PlayStation 4. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I would appreciate that a lot. And I'll catch you on my next video. Peace.